shouldn't, don't we as human beings have an obligation to try to share the burden of that refugee, that flight of people from the horrors of Syria, particularly as we've played a part in inflicting the horrors upon them? No, I'm not going to get into the geopolitics, no matter what. Um, you, you know, you, there's something you, you say about the, the West shouldn't have been trying to bring about regime change. I remember a gentleman, he's an Irish guy, I haven't got his name, he's uh, in the oil business. Marion Finucum had, had him on uh, when there, he had, had the Arab Spring and so on, and the, it looked as if there was going to be, you know, they were talking about regime change in Syria. And he wore, I heard him, he was very impressive, and he said, this is a different kettle of fish. Assad is a different kettle of fish, and it has been shown to be the case. But anyway... Um, I, I do not accept that, um, that the word I heard um, Marie there mention about uh, this being Europe's responsibility. Uh, certainly the taking in of people is not our responsibility. Uh, I would like to, to, to talk about the, the, the idea of the, the Syrians fleeing the bombs and the bullets. They go into Turkey, they go into Lebanon and they go into Jordan. Yes, you're right, um, uh, poor countries enough. Um, but they have then fled the bombs and the bullets. Let me give you... Uh, two um, case histories, one that's well known, and you, when, when they come further on, it is an economic move. Um, everybody remembers Elan um, um, Kurdi and uh, the, the response to uh, his family drowning. His father and that family had been in Turkey, his father had been working. His father decided economically, it, and I'm sure it was far from satisfactory, that wasn't good enough, he was going to Europe. He, they had been in safety, he led his, his family across that water and drowned, was the cause of them okay. all drowning. One second, the, the second um, uh, is a, a quotation from a few months ago, um, a Syrian speaking, he was in Turkey at the time, he was leaving to come to Europe and his complaint was, here in Turkey, you know, I'm exploited, I will only get half as much for my job, I will get paid half as much as a Turkish man will get paid, I'm going to Europe. Both of those cases, and hundreds of thousands more, all of them, are, and I know Kuyvi um, would call this reductionist, reductionist often is just logical, they have, they have gone to safety, they've fed the bombs and the bullets, there are no bombs and bullets falling, I, of course I'm sympathetic for the situation they're in, but they decide, no, we want a better life, understandably, and we're going to Europe. Yes, we should uh, be giving a lot more money. We've talked about some We people. should be giving a lot more money to help out there in Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan, but the Middle East is the Middle East's responsibility. Uh, Europe, uh, you why, were talking why, about... Why is it just Because the Europe why? is we're, fed we're all, up We're to all the, human beings. And, and, we're and, all human beings, uh, but we, we all have our own countries. Europe, and it's very obvious if you watch the politics of, of, of not just recent years, Europe has had enough of this. And but she Europe quite has right. a nerve. And Europe has a nerve in saying I'm it has enough of, this. enough of this. Europe <laughs> inflicted desolation on so much, uh, so much of the world over the years that it's that now to be complaining that some of that desolation is coming to their doors. That's your it's historical very viewpoint. Huh? That's your historical viewpoint. This is but I don't care what, what don't you have heard about history. I mean, I could, I'm not one of those people who goes on about the 800 years of oppression and I'm not going to be uh, talking about you know, what we should be doing to the British because of that kind of thing. History is history. If wherever you live, you, 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 you take the historical circumstances and you do your best with it. Um, I mean, there are those who, who, have, who say that Syria, um, what was it, the, uh, the, a phrase I saw in an essay on Syria, that it is um, uh, a, a state but not, not a nation, that, that it was, you know, Assad indeed kind of kept it. kept it before it's Oh, no, 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 I'm not attacking their, civiliz their civilization. I'm talking the different groupings. Assad managed apparently to keep them together. Uh, um, but there, there are those, I'm sure you have seen, who have... Who have, who have who have predicted in the past that it would never come back to a unit again, but I think it might under Assad. But okay. whatever those circumstances okay. are, you, saw, you, you sort it out. And a lot of okay. this also we, is Sunni Shia. We've got to go business. to a break. We've got to go to the text and tweets first. There are 49 predominantly Muslim countries and over 50 sovereign African nations. Why is this Europe's problem? That, that this discourse is you know, is, is given time, that it's given space, yeah, and that it's perpetuated. Listen to that now. What a democracy we live in. It's not about, it's not about Those censoring. Those who oppose you must not be it's heard. It's not about silencing. It's about widening that window of empathy and actually you looking just said at the concepts take place. of responsibility. No, I think a discussion in which the lives of people who are condemned to death by these policies Isn't at right? sea and in the backs of, of airless refrigerator trucks will be continued to be condemned by death by that lack of empathy. I just find it deeply sad, and I, I really wish that, that those who, who hold these opinions could go and see and interact with some of these people right. and listen to their stories. I, particularly since uh, Akiva has mentioned Cali, um, 
the people in Calais are in a safe country, France, but they have the brazen, unadulterated cheek to say, oh, that won't do. It's got to be Britain. Nowhere else will do us. They We're going families. to Britain. They have families. They come from post-colonial contexts in which they speak oh, listen. English. Oh, how, oh yeah. they speak English. Oh, I'm not going to go to the top of speaking French. I'm going to mm. Britain. No, they, they are want to in go a, a safe place country they and they have a brazen cheek work. backed up by idiots no, like you like to, to say it's got to be Britain. Britain. And we join their families. They often have legal rights yeah. and that yeah, aren't yeah. being respected under the Dublin regulation in order to be able to arrive in the UK because they have family members there. And they only have to go through the asylum process in France, uh, and I'm quite sure uh, they can you communicate with Britain. Excuse, excuse me. Not the, the, the right of family reunification the of is the right basis. of the people in Britain to say, I want my relative in Calais to come. It isn't actually, I think you being a lawyer will know that, it isn't the right of the person in yes. Calais to I, say, I, I, I want you to come. I think you're confusing yeah. now. We're talking about family reunion under the Dublin regulation, which well, happens so before I. you're through an asylum procedure, mm -hmm. where you're incorrectly quoting it there when you talk about it. Well, I'd stick to what I'm correct about. They have a brazen cheek to say, I'm in France, well, but France won't do. They have a right do. to be reunited with their family members. You have to remember about the principle of human mm. right, of a principle of family unity within this, the right to seek asylum with your family Britain. members. I consider Britain a decent country, and I'm quite happy for them to, to, to do their regulations. They you not feel that there is some obligation on the part of us as members of the human race to assist people who are in dire straits, such as the people in Syria, such as the people in parts of Africa, such as the people in, a, huh. in Afghanistan, in Pakistan and elsewhere, and that we should do our bit to assist those people. No, and on and on and on with your list. And as Quiva said, it was very interesting to listen to her. We mustn't exceptionalise Syria, neither must we. We must think of all these other ones, including the climate change and the, uh, and she seemed to imply the economic difficulties as well. There, it is never ending. And the rights you talk about, people are I didn't not, talk about no, rights. No, 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 sorry. We're that was you about over, rights. Here, yeah. over here. We're talking this about right, rights. right to asylum. Uh, well, it, really, it's, it's, it's too much to go into this evening. With the the, the, the um, Geneva Convention that was set up in 1951 said, and these people know that, it said this applied, I'm, I'm putting lay language in it, this applies, to, it was a mopping up operation after World War II, this applies to people displaced uh, uh, as a result of a World War II. It applied to nobody else and no other circumstance. And in 1967 with the New York Protocol, because of the Cold War and having no idea what was coming down the line in the future, they stupidly uh, expanded it. And both of those, they never, ever, ever would have signed it, the countries of the West, if they okay, knew what Maria, it would mean. Okay, Maria wants to get and back in. And there's an opt-out oh, Okay, just a minute, just a minute, Maria. I mean, I, I just hope that you never have to mm. plead conflict. Mm, I, just just oh, I'm sure you're terribly I worried really, about really me. hope that you never do, because it's such an inhumane response. I just can't believe it. Yes. It's truly yeah. shocking. Never mind the playing the man and not the ball. Stick to the policy. You, you've been, been, the, you you been playing the man. You called them stupid a few minutes ago. Okay, so we have our international legal framework within the Geneva Convention as correct. You referred to the 1967 protocol mm -hmm. as well. We're also part of a common European asylum system. And as part of the common European asylum system, we've signed up to a number of obligations under the Charter of Fundamental Rights. Yeah. Not Which only, my organisation opposed precisely for this well, reason. Well, we're a member of the European Union and we're part of the common European asylum this system. Is what it's Ireland going to is one of the, the main, uh, when we talk about the Dublin regulation, it's always been signed under the Irish presidency of the Council of so the European what? Union. So we have opted into that common European asylum system. Yes, it is grounded on international human rights. We have framework these in many things, ways, yes. but not in all ways. And you just really need to look at the right to asylum being really guaranteed in practice as well as in law. Um, and I just really hope that you never in the situation that you have to flee your home. The, the Geneva Convention should never have been interfered with. It should have been what it said purely as a mopping up operation after World War II. And both of those things, the Convention and the um, New York Protocol, have an opt-out clause. You, of course, the EU would, would be a different kettle of fish, but any country that signed up as we did, and I think it was 54 or whatever, every country can give a, a, a 12 months notice and withdraw from it. And if we had any cop on, that's what all the countries of the West would who be is doing. We, who is we? What constituency said, do you I represent? I mean, really, who is we? Because I, I um, would say that there's a deep core of empathy of and humanity and compassion in Ireland and I've seen that on so many expressions yeah. in from the grassroots you know up and, and I really hope that that you can bear witness to some of that whether it's on the ground in camps or interface mm -hmm. with people who are prioritizing empathy it's, it's yeah, and we, we can go into policy but I think the core of this is having the basic humanity and decency to see people in times of need and and to do the right thing by there will be no end to the times of need yeah, uh, Iraq Afghanistan uh, Syria Eritrea
and on and on and on. And on.